Uh, it seems like, you know, it's great having you and Steve here at the same time because we get, you know, it seems like you guys have a lot of the same plans. You guys have a lot of the same goals. So what is it that separates you from Steve specifically? What makes you a better candidate than Steve, which would be grabbing my support in the general. I can't vote for you in the primary. <laughs> primary <laughs> Republican, but what would, what's driving me to vote for you in the general over voting for Steve? I'm going to say this, and as Steve said yeah. earlier, we are very good friends, yeah. and we share yeah. many core values. Honestly, at the end of the day, when people choose any candidate, mm -hmm. they have to feel good about what kind of uh, leadership will be there. Because you're not going to know all the issues. You're not going to know if it's about paper machines or sick leave or education. You're going to have to have a sense of the person and a track record. For me, I've always been there a little bit ahead of the curve. Maine was the first state to put some money into Head Start because we saw it work. I sponsored the bottle. You see this bottle? We've been talking about water. You don't throw it away, do you? Because it's got a 5% deposit on it. And a bottle of it. And I, when I sponsored that bill, I represented rural towns, and the little grocers didn't want me to come in anymore because at that time they had to take the dirty bottles. And in fact, it went to referendum, and the people said, ah, you're taking the bottles. We like that. I've done the same thing with choice, but it wasn't very popular. My grandchild has no idea the things that women have had to crash through because I make it look easy to her, and that's my job. I want her to believe that she can do anything. <coughs> So the same thing would be, I'm not, I'm not risk averse. I stand up and not, Steve is not either. I'm not saying that he's any of these things. I'm just describing myself because Steve speaks very eloquently for himself. Uh, I have four children who speak a lot about me in terms of how they are. We're a public service family. My oldest daughter was in the legislature. She does health care. My second son is an entrepreneur. He makes maps in Portland. He's a small businessman. My next son, as it was an ACLU lawyer, represents community college right now, but he wants his own business, and you know what he's doing? He's opening a bowling alley in Portland, and he has <laughs> 200 bowlers already because young people in Portland, 20s and 30-somethings, wanted to be together. But he's got his business, entrepreneur. He wanted to do that. And then finally, my youngest daughter, she's a lawyer, practicing with her dad, but the real passion is horses. And she teaches horses. She lives on a farm trust. And she's also running for the legislature. So I've got four kids that I didn't totally corrupt by loving politics all my life. And I told them, and I guess I'll tell you, I don't care what you do. Do it well, serve others, and find your passion. I have a passion. I think I can bring people together, and I think I can get the job done. And that's why I would ask Democrats to vote for me. But I can tell you this, should I lose the primary, I'll be right behind. Uh, the colleague that wins. So you just have to get a sense of the person. Uh, I'll share a story with you. Uh, this is my last one. I think I'm done, Tom. Uh, I had a chance to hear two people speak at a reunion that my husband went to. One was General Petraeus. And believe it or not, he's the intellectual warrior. Not only did he go to West Point, but he has a PhD from Princeton. And he was talking about leadership, and it fits military, it fits the legislature, it fits your school, or whatever else you do. And he said, you need a bold idea. You have to be able to communicate it so that other people want to follow you. And then you have to communicate it up and down the chain. And you have to make sure that those people on the front lines are guiding you to do it right. And on that same day, the second person, and this means a lot to me because I've seen it disintegrate so much in the past few years, uh, is Jim Leach, who was a former congressman of your party, as a matter of fact, and a very good friend of ours, uh, is now the chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities. He is going around to every state in the country. He came to ours first, and if I leave you with nothing else, please start realizing how first main is in so many things, because we hear so much whining about how bad we are. But he came here because we've done so much with the arts and the humanities and historic preservation. But this is his message. This is his message. <coughs> Civil discourse. We have lost that in public policy. I mean, you and I can disagree on any of these issues, but it's not personal. But, and that's great, that's democracy. E.J. Dion called it principled partisanship. Neither one of us have the right answer, 
But if we work together, we'll find a way. Whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, or a Green, it doesn't matter. But principal partisanship. I can tell you something. The coarseness of public debate right now, look at Washington, I hate to, but I will. But the kinds of emails, emails that made all of you feel, not even necessarily, people feel invisible. They can say anything to you, they can call you anything. Most of the time they don't sign their name, but even if they do sign their name, they feel anonymous. The most hate mail I've gotten in my 18, 20 years of public service were on feeding children breakfast. You know why? Their parents should do it for them. They weren't so lazy they didn't get out of bed and feed them. But it was horrible, I cannot tell you. And Naomi Shalit, who worked for the Kennebec Journal, did a series on hunger in Maine. And I thought, well, I can't fix all of hunger, but I can do that part. But the, her secretary wrote to me, and she said, I'm in an abusive relationship. I work for Naomi Shalit, and she gets the worst hate mail of anybody in the country. So both Naomi and I were really pillared for spending state dollars on helping kids get breakfast so they could learn. I know that sounds silly to you. And the sick leave bill, for however you feel about it, there are women, <coughs> particularly women in the state, who have to choose between staying home sick when the doctor tells you to and losing a day's pay that they can't afford to lose. Now, I'm sorry, I stood up for that because I believe in that. I can't pass it, but I believe in it. So, but I'm not angry at anybody, but again, my mail. Are you stupid? Are you crazy? And worse than that, and one woman wrote to me, which she would never say to one of you men, after she chastised me for 10 minutes, you should stay home and bake brownies. And uh, someone suggested I should ask for her recipe, but I did not. <laughs> <laughs> she, she would not have told you that. She would not have told you to bake brownies. But if you think that's gone, it is. And every day of our lives, we have to make sure that there is a civil discourse, that we learn from one another, we respect one another, because that's what's going to make us a great institution and us a great state. And I really believe in all of you. And thank you. And I'm sorry. Oh,